Hello, in this video, I'm going to talk about Fitt's Law. Um, so Fitt's Law applies to speed and accuracy skills. So when we talk about speed accuracy skills, we're referring to skills that require both qualities. So something like pitching a fastball, where you want to pitch as fast as possible, speed matters, but it also has to be accurate. Uh, or other things like speed typing, playing a song on the piano at a fast tempo. So anything where the movement needs to be both quick and accurate. Um, now, Fitt's law is really describing the trade-off between those two qualities. So we can only be so fast and maintain accuracy and only so accurate and maintain speed. Um, manual aiming skills are an example of speed accuracy skills. Um, so manual aiming skills are those that involve arm, hand, and or finger movement to a target at an unspecified speed. So that could be something like putting a key into a keyhole, threading a needle with thread, typing on a keyboard. Um, so things, skills where we need to aim and be highly accurate. And then speed is kind of a function of accuracy. So it's like accuracy is the priority. And then you go however slowly or quickly you need to go to be able to be accurate. Um, so there is a trade-off between the two. Um, so if we need to emphasize accuracy, then we need to reduce speed. If we need to emphasize speed, then we need to reduce accuracy. Um, so for many skills, the goal is to be both quick and accurate, um, but there is a trade-off between the two and Fitt's Law helps us understand the trade-off. So Fitt's Law is based on the work of Paul Fitz from 1954. Uh, it's a mathematical law, and we'll look at the equation on the next slide. Um, and the, it's a mathematical law to predict movement speed given specific accuracy characteristics. So how accurate do we need to be? How far away is the target? Um, how small is the target? So we're taking these different characteristics into account um, to be able to predict the movement speed um, and the movement time of the whole movement um, based on how difficult it is, basically. Um, so it's for situations where a person needs to move to a target as quickly and accurately as possible. Um, as the distance to move increases, the movement will take longer because it makes sense. It's going to take longer to travel a longer distance. As the target size becomes smaller, that means the task is more difficult, then movement speed will decrease because it must decrease to ensure accuracy. So the more accurate and precise we need to be in our movements, the slower we have to go because if we move more slowly, that gives more time for proprioceptive, visual and tactile feedback to be considered. You know, Our brain is able to take those um, sen that sensory feedback into account to adjust the movement so that we can be as accurate as possible. So faster movement means less time for, for sensory feedback and less time to adjust and maintain accuracy and more time means more ability to do that. So the variables that we take into consideration in Fitt's law are distance to move, so how far away is the target and then target size, how big is the target. So here's the equation and I don't wanna spend a lot of time here, um, but it's just more to help you understand kind of the idea of how Fitt's law works and how it applies. Um, but this is the basic equation um, where D and W, that's the distance and the target width or size, those are the variables that you would change to calculate movement time. So A and B are both constants based on a regression analysis of the movement time data. Um, so those are constants. And so we would manipulate D and W depending on the situation. So how far away is the target and how big is the target? And that's what uh, we use to calculate the movement time. So the latter half of this equation here um, gives us an index of difficulty of the task. Um, so it's a quantitative measure of the difficulty of performing the skill involving speed and accuracy requirements. So a higher index of difficulty, so a higher numerical value there when you do the calculation will mean that it's more difficult and will require more movement time because accuracy is, is harder to achieve. Therefore, we need to spend more time doing it. Um, so 
We've talked in past videos about open and closed loop motor control processes. Um, and now I just wanna talk about it here in this context. Um, so open loop occurs initially and moves the limb into the vicinity of the target. Okay, so the first part of the movement in a speed accuracy motion um, is going to be based on the motor control plan, the, you know, the, the plan that the central nervous system is sending to the effectors, the muscles, uh, without consideration of sensory feedback. Um, so the first part, the initial generation of the movement is going to be open loop without that sensory feedback. So the initial movement speed, direction, and accuracy are all controlled by the CNS with no feedback. So it's open loop. Um, because the next phase includes feedback, then that portion is closed loop. So we have feedback about the limb's relative position to the target that we use to guide the limb to the target. Okay, so let's say I'm just reaching to touch a specific point on the wall or something. The initial reach part is gonna be open loop that we're just gonna generate based on the motor commands that go out to the, the proper effectors. But then as I get closer to that target, I'm gonna use visual feedback about where my finger is in space relative to that target. And I'm gonna use that visual feedback and go through that closed loop so that I can adjust my accuracy and be able to touch that target accurately. So the amount of time available is the primary determinant of whether corrections are made using the feedback. So if I move too quickly, I won't be able to use that sensory feedback to make adjustments and be accurate. Uh, so the slower I go, the more accurate I will be capable of making my contact. Um, because I'll have more time for sensory feedback to make adjustments to my movement. Um, so if speed is too fast during the open loop phase, um, there isn't sufficient time for visual feedback to be used to make adjustments for the closed loop. All right, so three phases for speed accuracy skills. The first phase happens before there's any movement at all. So that's the movement preparation phase that begins when the decision is made to perform the skill and it ends when phase two starts. So when the actual movement begins. Um, so during this phase, sensory information is used to determine regulatory conditions of the environmental context. Okay, so I'm using um, visual, tactile, auditory, whatever kind of sensory information is available to me to kind of assess the situation. So maybe I've made the decision to reach out and you know, touch the, push the button or touch the light switch or whatever it is. I've made the decision. I use visual and whatever other types of sensory feedback I can use to determine the condition. So like, um, I don't know, maybe it's up really high or maybe it looks really slippery or <laughs> maybe there's something in the way that I have to dodge, you know? So I'm, I'm taking into account uh, the conditions in the environment in which I'm doing this skill. Um, so then the central nervous system prepares the specific movement characteristics to initiate and carry out the action. Okay, so phase one is taking in the information, making the decision about the action and preparing to actually do it. Then phase two starts when you actually begin the initiation of the limb movement. Uh, so this phase two is the open loop portion um, that's happening without any sensory feedback to help to make corrections. So now you are just executing the plan that you came up with in phase one. Um, and meanwhile, you're collecting sensory information as you go, but this is happening too quickly to be able to incorporate that sensory information. That sensory feedback you're gonna use and incorporate to then correct the movement in phase three. So termination phase, phase three, is just before you make contact. It's just before you hit the target um, and then it ends immediately after you've hit the target. So that last portion is closed loop, where now we are using the sensory feedback that we collected during phase two, and then also continuing to collect as we enter into phase three. So we're using that sensory feedback to adjust the movement plan so that we can make sure that we're accurate in our contact with the whatever is the target. All right, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.